Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday meditation gathering. I'm so glad you're all here to share this time together. This week, we have Sandy Snelling, who will lead us in meditation. And then we have 20 minutes of silence. After that, we're going to open it up for sharing, and we end at 1045. Over to you, Sandy. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be here with you and to join in meditation with you. So when I asked for guidance for what we should meditate on today, what came to mind is that I've been thinking a lot recently about how um, everybody that I know, whether you're on the, the path of the Course of Miracles or some other path, or perhaps not even looking like you're on a path at all, how we all feel at some point we don't belong here. And, um, you know, nobody seems to know why. And um, it just is that deep feeling that we have inside us. And in lesson 182, um, the course describes this very well. It says, the world you seem to live in is not home to you. And somewhere in your mind, you know that this is true. A memory of home keeps haunting you as if there was a place that called you to return. Although you do not recognize the voice, nor what is the voice reminds you of. Yet still you feel alien here from somewhere all unknown. Nothing so definite that you could say with certainty you are an exile here, just a persistent feeling, sometimes not more than a tiny throb, at other times hardly remembered, actively dismissed, but surely to return to your mind again. So as students of the course, we know that this is due to our separation from God, from that tiny mad idea where we forgot to laugh and we separated ourselves off. But throughout the course, Jesus tells us how to remember who we are and how to return home. He knows that this is this separation is one of the most painful things we can have. And one of my favourite poems has this. Um, he, he's a Persian poet and he beautifully says this in a poem that's called Just Sit There Right Now, which I'll read. Just sit there right now. Don't do a thing. Just rest. For your separation from God is the hardest work in this world. Let me bring you trays of food and something that you like to drink. You can use my soft words as the cushion for your head. So he just says that so, so beautifully. So we will use Jesus's words as a cushion for our heads today as we become still and we come home together. So I'll guide you gently in a meditation and then we'll have 20 minutes of silence. And then um, um, you will hear the bell and then just gently come round. And as usual, if you find your mind wanders, which it probably will, just smile, bring yourself back to your breath and just say the words, I rest in God. <clears throat> so let's settle in and get ourselves comfortable. <clears throat> I'll clear my throat. <laughs> I've got a bit of a frog. All right. So just become aware of the parts of you that are touching the chair or the cushion or the floor. And just know that that's gonna support you throughout the whole of the meditation, holding you still, <clears throat> keeping you safe, keeping you grounded. And then we're gonna take a couple of deep breaths together. So we're gonna breathe in and gently let it go. Breathing in, and then gently let it go. So just bring your awareness to the top of your head, to your crown, and we're gonna breathe into here, breathing in. And as we breathe out, just let those muscles of the scalp soften, relaxing, letting go. Breathing in again. And as you breathe out, just let your eyes soften, your jaw soften. Just gently let go. Breathing in. And as you breathe out, let your throat and your shoulders soften. Feel the melting, softening, letting go. 
Breathing in. Dropping down to your heart center, just allowing love to soften and open this area, letting go. Breathing in. And come in through the crown and all the way down through your body, through your hips, through your legs, your ankles, feet and toes, deep into the earth with roots grounding you, softening, letting go. So as you gently let your breath come to its normal rhythm, listen to the words that Jesus has given us for us to say to ourselves. Ask for rest today and quietness unshaken by the world's appearances. Ask for peace and stillness. It calls to me in every heartbeat and every breath, in every action and every thought. I rest in God. Peace fills my heart and floods my body with the purpose of forgiveness. I rest in God. Now my mind is healed and all I need to save the world is given me. I rest in God. Each heartbeat beat brings me peace. Each breath infuses me with strength. I rest in God. I am sustained by him in love and held forever quiet and at peace in his loving arms. I rest in God. Each heartbeat calls his name and everyone is answered by his voice, assuring me I am at home in him. I rest in God. Just keep opening and softening and keep allowing as you go. I rest in God. I rest in God.
Open your eyes slowly and come back into the room. We have 17 minutes left for sharing your reflections and your questions. If you'd like to speak, raise your hand or use the reactions button at the bottom of the screen, and I'll invite you to take yourself off of mute. If you'd like to ask Sandy a question or a comment with confidentiality, put your message in the chat function at the bottom of the screen, and I'll read it out. Uh, Linda, take yourself off mute. Thank you, Sandy. I feel as though what I've been asking for has been given me today with, with the words you've been given to, to say. When you read that poem out, my eyes filled up with, with diamonds, watery diamonds, and that stayed with me the whole of the meditation. I've had a really burnt out year. And I've asked, it's not that I haven't asked for it, I've asked for everything to be brought up so I can see it and let it go. But you never realize how much there is. <laughs> and um, the they were all opportunities. So instead of seeing it as really horrible, they were opportunities for me, but I have been really burnt out. And it's been coming the last few days, rest, rest in God. Um, it, my lessons are all about that at the moment. So I just, and I, I've got these diamondy tears in my eyes they're not running down my face but my eyes are filled with these tears with blobs of tears <laughs> diamonds and it's just exactly what I needed today exactly what I needed so I can't thank you enough for, for you use letting those words out that you've been given to say thank you thank you bless you that's wonderful. That was just the medicine you needed. <clears throat> and Hasbeth's has has poetry is just beautiful. It's full of love and laughter and joy of God. So, yeah, I'd recommend Hasbeth. <clears throat> Who'd like to share? John, take yourself off mute. Oh, thank you, Sandy. I can echo uh, Linda's words there. Thank you, everybody, because I have, I have uh, real, I also have really great need for that today. I've allowed myself in the far past few days, we've been buying and selling property, you know, selling our home in England and buying a home here. And I've found myself right back. I've had massive, just as Linda said, we don't know how much there is. And what this last few days has brought up was massive resentment against the legal profession and lawyers from right from way back my whole days my business days I was always I was fighting the world in those days you know and uh, it brought all that up and, and and I love that lesson it's one of my all-time papers and I when I first read that lesson of course I cried because it it sort of answered everything and um, you know I've been in 12 step where I, I, I thought there's got to be something more than this. And why did we why did we turn to drink in the first place? And really, whether it's drink, it's work, it's, it's you know, whatever it is, it's all really to cover up that that feeling that, that you know we know this is not our home. And um, and I love that. I, I, I read it a lot. And I had a teacher that gave me a great analogy who said the thing is with us a lot, meaning us a lot, is that before we come in again, we're given a an amnesia tablet because we're not supposed to remember heaven. We're supposed to come here and work our way back. And the trouble with us lot is the amnesia tablet didn't work too well. So, so we have this we have this <laughs> memory of it. And I thought that's a fantastic thing because as, as a kid, I mean, as a young kid, I fit in no way. I didn't fit, I felt a lady everywhere. And then the funny thing was, as well, I love 
that's this is poem when he said, I'll give you something nice to drink <laughs> in that poem. <laughs> he did that for me. And of course, the minute I had that, that was it. Boom. I suddenly felt connected. Really, really strange, you know. So it was that fear. It was unbelievable fear. Uh, and then when I stopped drinking, all that fear came up. And it's been, you know, with, with working through the course, it slowly got rid of it. But you see, oh, I thank God for the course. I thank God for all of you people. <laughs> it's nice to know that there are a few people that understand they're insane with us. <laughs> so thank you. And then the final thing, I love Hafiz as well. I, love, I studied Hafiz. And I, I love his all-time favourite uh, piece that I read of his was he said, in the end, all humans either have two choices. They either come to God dressed for dancing or they get wheeled into God's ward on the stretcher. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you so much and thank you as well for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you. That's lovely. Norman, would you like to share? Thank you very much. Um, we were just talking about the uh, poet Hafiz, I think he called, and guess what I've got sitting on my mantelpiece. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's a picture of a body, but it's not a body, it's all rays and light. And the, the wee poem that accompanies it, this just reads, I wish I could show you when you are lonely or in darkness, the astonishing light of your own being. That is, and uh, to me, the astonishing light of our own being is God's presence within us. And uh, everything that you, you said, Sandy, reflects that. You know, that the sun shines off the moon. The moon has no light, but it reflects it. It looks lovely, especially this time of the year. But God's love is in us, and it doesn't really need uh, reflecting as such because it can blow away there. And during the meditation, I, I was thinking of all the, the love that would come down through me and heal my body and go out through the world and then come back up again and heal everybody else. And then I thought, hang on a minute, I don't have to go that far. The world is in my mind. And I have to just offer the world that's in my mind, all the love that I can muster up, which isn't mine at all, it's God's. So the world I see will, will improve. And there won't be anything to forgive anybody for because it's my world in my head. And everybody in it, including everyone here, is in my head. And there's nothing real, as the Beatles say, it's saying, even hey, nothing was real, and nothing to go on about. And all these things just came flooding back from that one memory. There's something wrong here. I don't feel at home. But yet at the same time, feeling a wonderful protection, uh, you know, a spirit, if you like, in a bubble, in, which protects everybody. Who, who we were all dreaming, so we're all part of each other's dreams. And that was quite marvellous. Thank you very much. Thank you, Norman. But do remember that you are love, that you are God's love. You said it's it's not your love. It is God's, but we are a part of God's, so it is your love as well. It's beautiful. Thank you. Who'd like to share? I just like to say, Sandy, that was beautiful. What a great lead into meditation. I loved it. And what lesson was that you read? Um, it was a bit of a mixture. It was from lesson two, six, seven. And then I put in resting God in between okay. certain lines just to um, really emphasize that. So, but it's a beautiful lesson. I, I, I love it. And, and I agree with everybody, you know, I think, I think when I first read the 182, um, I cried as well. It was just that feeling of, of, you know, understanding finally why I felt that way. You know, I was very well liked, but I never felt I fitted in anywhere. And, you know, the worst place was on the playground as a mum, just thinking, I don't think the same as people here. <laughs> I just really don't fit in. So, you know, finding the course has really helped me to um, love who I am and um, be happy that we are a part of God. So, yeah, it's good. 
Thank you. Beautiful. Who'd like to share? Ian, take yourself off mute. Yes, am I on? Yes. Um, thank you, Sandy. Um, yeah, I also love um, Hafiz and um, Rumi as well, the other uh, Persian, I think, uh, poets, beautiful, profound poetry from, what, hundreds of years ago. Um, and that, uh, that lesson has always been one of my favourites too, and I really re related to the experience of feeling like an alien. And I, I, looking back through my life, I think I've always felt that way. I've always been aware of that feeling. And um, even with my family, I used to look at them or be with them in the house and think, who are these people? Because on one level, they're aliens too. So we're a bunch of aliens together. And it, I never felt like on one level, um, that that I belonged with this family. Obviously, on a spiritual level, on the level of the Christ, we belong together. Um, but at that, in those days, I wasn't really so much aware of that. It was just a bunch of bodies together, and, and why, and who, and um, all that kind of thing. So, um, yeah. So I really appreciated those readings and uh, and the meditation itself. So nothing much profound to say, but just to say thank you for that, and just how much I related to to those things. You're welcome. Thank you. Dennis, take yourself off mute. Thank you, Sandy, for that reminder. Um, I heard about it in the port when I was in my 40s and someone said, this is not our home. We don't belong here. And I thought, thank God for that. <laughs> how do we get back home what are we doing here um i've i've reached the point once in my a couple of times in my life to being of light and the oneness but i couldn't stay there and I, my question is how do we get there back there again please um, yes i think we're all trying with you to <laughs> it is, isn't it? it's that frustration sometimes that we get that that feeling and we know that but it's remaining in it and um at some point we will remain in it forever more but um until then we've got to just keep going and, and you know i think this is it when we rest in god we're filling up our cup you know you were talking linda about feeling you know drained and empty and we are meant to keep resting in god regularly every day because that's filling up our cup and we, we can only give from a full cup, you know, and it doesn't matter if it overflows, that's great, you know, but um, we just need to keep resting. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Dennis. Who'd like to share? Jim, take yourself off mute. Thank you, Dan, and thank you, Sandy, for those uh, lovely words, both the ones you, of your own and the ones you read. Um, I, what struck me from the Hafiz poem, which I hadn't heard before, towards the end, he said something like, uh, separation or separating from God is painful. It was something along those lines. Yeah, for your separation from God is the hardest work in this world. Perhaps that was it. Yeah, that was it. Because it, it reminded me, uh, early, a couple of days ago, um, I was shoveling leaves up from the garden, and I live in a house surrounded by trees, which is absolutely lovely but this time of year I pay the price absolutely leaves everywhere and um, I alternated between thinking it was hard work and that I had a lot to do and just resting in shoveling the leaves and this separation from God of course as we're always told is separation from this moment and so if I could just if I allow the body to shovel these leaves and put them in the bin. I, I use a snow shovel, which my neighbours sometimes give me sarcastic comments about. But it's very effective if you've got loads of leaves. A snow shovel is perfect. I shovel up these leaves, I put them in the bin, and uh, what was happening, and I was, I was able to really get some observation about 
how the energy was draining. Every time I went away to thoughts like, there's a lot to do, have I got time? You know, what do I do next? All these other thoughts that come in all the time and how much energy that was draining. And it was really separating from God that was taking my energy and simply being with the moment, being with the leaves and really appreciating of these beautiful leaves. There was a lot of them, but they were quite beautiful. And the body needed very little energy, in fact, very little bit of physical energy. All of the physical energy that was being drained was going into my thoughts of uh, it's, you know, it's hard, it, it, thinking it was hard work when it wasn't, or thinking I had other things to do, when really all I had to do at that moment was shovel up these leaves. And so the way he put it was so beautiful about uh, you know, separate, this separating from God is hard work because it not only applies in terms of it being painful to separate from God, but it also applies to the fact that it's physically draining to separate from God. And everything we do can either be done resting in God or not. And if we're not resting in God, at the end of the day, exhaustion if we are end of the day full of energy uh so uh, so yes it, thank you again anyway for those words oh, and what they reveal that's beautiful thank you okay we've come to the top of the hour um thank you so much sandy that was beautiful and thank you all for being here and uh hope to see you next week lots of love to you Lots of love. Thanks. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you. 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 Thank you